Well, hello, buddy, and welcome to the start of our adventure to Isle Royal National Park in Archipelago in the northwest corner of Lake Superior. Reached only by boat or seaplane, we'll be taking a seaplane out of Houghton Hancock, the birthplace of professional hockey. Our runway is the Keweenaw Waterway, a canal system that long ago introduced the world to Lake Superior's copper. Joining me, one of my oldest hockey buddies, Gino, and of course, you all. Our plane is the De Havilland Beaver, the best bush plane ever built. Developed shortly after World War II by Jeffrey De Havilland, with only 1,657 of these planes ever produced. There's many still high in the sky today, like this old beauty who would carry us all the way across Kichigumi to just south of Thunder Bay, Ontario. Look, buddy, Isle Royal, made up of not only the main island, but 450 other ones, all making up the least visited national park in the lower 48, but also the most revisited national park. Let that one sink in, eh? Isle Royal has two developed areas, one on the Michigan side and one on the Minnesota side. We're headed to Rock Harbor on the Michigan side. As we begin our hike of just over six and a half miles, I'm reminded that we're taking the same path that our Native American buddies took over 4,000 years ago, but without compasses, maps, and definitely without a jet boil. They use landmarks and walk the terrain with caution because although beautiful, the Rock Harbor to Daisy Park Trail is one of the most difficult on the island. And let me tell you, you know Gino are starting to feel it. But it's hard to complain and hard to not smile with some of God's best work around every corner. An island I was once traveled to by Native Americans in birch bark canoes it is now surrounded by shipwrecks. Over 10 large vessels, still perfectly preserved in Lake Superior's cold, fresh water, surround the island and are on the National Register of Shipwrecks. designated a national park in 1940 by President Franklin D. Roosevelt with the goal of preserving a prime example of Northwood's wilderness. Look at these moose rubs. Holy wa, pretty cool, eh? I really hope we see one. There's over 1,200 on the island, with their main predator being the eastern timber wolf which would be really cool to see too. <laughs> or maybe just here, howling in the night. Look at me, just chatting away. Sorry, buddy. Let's enjoy the walk a bit, eh?
Daisy Park Campground. Since there's no potable water here, and very few possibilities to start a fire, we'll be using the Sawyer filtration system to remove the contaminants and allow us to replenish and rehydrate ourselves after a long day on the trail. We should get some sleep, buddy. Tomorrow's a long day, full of adventure. Good night. Well, hello, buddy, and good morning. Time for some jitter juice before we hit the six mile trail to our next campsite, Eddie's Chicken Bone. I got this jet boil a couple weeks ago. And let me tell you, this thing is pretty cool. It packs light, sets up quick, and achieves a rapid boil quickly. Perfect for some morning jitter juice on the go. Or maybe even some hot drinks in the old ice house come winter time. We'll be using an organic roast made by all women farmers and sent to me by my good buddy in England, Sarah. Thank you so much, buddy. This jet boil cooking system even came with a French press attachment, making things even easier. <laughs> this isn't an advertisement, just a shout out to jet boil for a job well done. While on the beach, I noticed another fellow adventure seeker spending her morning painting the landscape just to the north. And I couldn't help but stop by for a little peep and to say hello. Her name is Jen from Minnesota, also known as Wandering Pine online. Make sure to check her page out on Instagram and here on YouTube. Great meeting you, Jen. Hope you enjoyed the rest of your trip with plenty of memories to take home. Now, a little celebratory cheers, and then it's on the trail again to East Chicken Bone. We'll pass plenty of wildflowers and onto the Greenstone Ridge through beaver dams and lodges built by some of the world's best contractors who weave all these branches together by cutting down trees with their teeth and waterproofing them with mud. Beavers are primarily nocturnal and spend most of their time eating and building, as evident here. With our camelbacks full of fresh spring water and our hearts set on adventure, we move upstream, inland, towards East Chicken Bone, a six mile trek right through a couple of bogs that are easy to pass through, thanks to the park service. 
that built these boardwalks and keeps them well maintained. These boardwalks allow us to move gracefully and quietly as we make our way through the forest, enjoying the wildlife along the way, like this pelated woodpecker, one of North America's biggest forest birds. Lots of elevation on this hike, which made for a great workout and some pretty decent views. Well, hello, buddy. An American red squirrel. Carrying some food back home, eh? Let's name you Chestnut. Take care, buddy. Holy what? Ah, we made it to the East Chicken Bone Campsite. Let's set up shop, eh? Now, let's head down to the lake for some fresh water, right from Lake Chicken Bone. Look how clear it is. Let's make some supper. Mountain House Adventure Meal, creamy mac and cheese, mixed with real bacon bits, for an easy but delicious trailside snack. The nights are special here, on the island. If you stand still, and listen, you can hear not only the call of a common moon, but also the sounds of the natural world busy at work. Good night, buddy. I'll see you in the morning. Good morning, buddy. Let's get camp packed.
breakfast. Some apple jacks and some fresh milk, thanks to a couple of powder packets. Today's hike is another six mile doozy to Mount Franklin down the Greenstone Ridge, the ridge that was formed over one billion years ago after hot lava settled and hardened, making it one of Earth's largest and thickest lava flows. Holy what? Pretty cool, eh? Nice little moose antler. <laughs> Tell the critters got to it a bit, but still in pretty good shape. We'll leave it here. The next guy to find. A fully grown bull moose can weigh well over 1,500 pounds with their antlers weighing upwards of 60. Holy wah, speak of the devil. So cool, buddy. And who's this? Hello, girl. Another one. Didn't even see you. Let's name you Xena, warrior princess. Moose are too tall to eat grass, so they prefer to eat leaves and twigs, which is how they got their name, moose, which translates to eater of twigs. Luck is with us. Well, at least it was for a bit, eh? As the rain moved in, an old Gino activated an old hockey injury by re-tearing his ACL, meniscus, and lateral ligaments where we had to hike three miles on his torn ACL to meet some park rangers over at Daisy Farm. Forced to walk in pain every step. Old Gino is as tough as a moose's glutes in black fly season and made it to the dock. A bittersweet ending to a great trip. But Gino's spirits were high as we made our way past Edison's fishery named after its last fisherman, Pete Edison, who was in operation until 1975. His home still sits there and represents a simpler time on the shores of Lake Superior. As we approach the docks of Rock Harbor, we're met by another park ranger with a golf cart and a nice reserved campsite about 300 yards away as the crow flies. Thank you to the National Park Service for keeping us safe and comfortable. Let's lift our spirits with some chili mac and cheese. Another mountain house hit. Well, must have smelled good, eh? as a couple of moose buddies made their way through our campsite. A large bull moose that we named Boris and another visitor, this old girl that we named Maple. Oh, go ahead, buddy. Well, hello, buddy. Aren't you cool looking? My name's Fritz. Let's name you Easton. Well, more buddies. And more. Pretty cool, Pretty cool eh? eh? It's been a long day, buddy. Let's get some sleep. Good night. Well, hello, buddy. Pretty easy agenda on the books today. We'll just head to our port at Rock Harbor and wait for our seaplane. Another de Havilland beaver to take us home. A bittersweet feeling 
as I've really enjoyed myself here these last couple of days and can't wait to come back. But summer's here and so many more adventures wait at home, including my best buddy, old Donnybrook, who I've really missed and is at my neighbor Comey's house. As we make our way across Kichigumi, I look at our royal one last time out the window of this old bush plane as it disappears on the horizon. I realize a piece of my heart will always be there on its wild and rocky shores where wild meets wonder and the sky meets the pines and where God must have spent a little more time a place I came to disconnect, but somehow feel more connected than ever. Until next time, Isle Royal, goodbye, and thank you. <laughs>